So here to talk about BBJH's African Access Initiative and to talk about access to cancer medicines and technologies in Africa and training healthcare professionals working in the oncology space in Africa. So BVGH developed and launched the African Access Initiative in early 2017 with five core objectives. So to deliver uh, cancer medicines and technologies that are high quality, more affordable and sustainable, um, and demand driven by African oncologists and, um, and nations. Also strengthening healthcare infrastructure, so particularly looking at diagnostic capacity to diagnose cancers accurately and correctly, and across the healthcare professionals treating cancer patients. Uh, we also have a significant um, part of our work focused on training and the education of African healthcare professionals. Again, working across subspecialties in oncology, and building partnerships with international um, experts in oncology. Also advancing research, so we recognize that uh, in Africa, African cancer patients, healthcare professionals have been underrepresented in participating in international oncology research and clinical trials. So we're also um, strengthening research through our African Consortium for Cancer Clinical Trials. And lastly, we're working with uh, regional uh, NGOs that are driving advocacy and awareness. So we've worked with those organizations to uh, develop some patient education and awareness materials. When we launched uh, the African Access Initiative, we conducted a, a comprehensive assessments of both the National Cancer Control Plans in the seven countries that we're working in, but also across the cancer hospitals that we're working with. And so through those assessments, we identified the priorities of the healthcare professionals, um, the CEOs of those hospitals in improving cancer patient outcomes. And there was a real focus on uh, knowledge sharing, mentorship, training of healthcare professionals. So with that information, we've engaged international experts across uh, the United States, Canada, Europe, um, within Africa as well, to design and develop training programs. And with the pandemic hitting us um, in March of 2020, uh, fortunately, we were already working in northern Nigeria on some virtual training programs. So we've expanded our virtual training and digital training programs to include literally thousands of oncology healthcare professionals across the African continent in training programs. And so we've conducted multiple training programs in pathology. Radiotherapy has been another area that's been prioritized. So we've been working with international experts in radiotherapy, including um, Rios Contra Cancer, a group out of um, the UC uh, healthcare system to get, conduct training. We have a team coming over from Australia to Nigeria to actually conduct training on HDR brachytherapy in person and on the ground and to get, conduct training this fall on um, HDR brachytherapy for breast cancer. Uh, we've also been advancing training on research through a grant that we implemented that was supported by Takeda Pharmaceuticals. And we've funded about 15 oncologists that are asking important questions about their cancer patients. And so starting to support the research that African oncology healthcare professionals are proposing and want to answer to help improve their, um, their treatment and management of cancer patients. Lastly and importantly, we've also been working um, both at the Ministry of Health level in countries, but also with individual hospitals and regions, so districts, states, to facilitate access to cancer medicines, um, again with companies that have US FDA approved cancer medicines to assure the quality. And we've coordinated access now um, that's delivered more than 10,000 packs of cancer medicines, uh, treated m almost uh, 4,000 cancer patients with full courses of treatment regimens, um, which we've helped the hospitals to actually budget for.
So we just actually conducted our AAI stakeholder meetings in, in Nigeria. We were also in Senegal recently to um, debrief on the programs that BVGH has run with international experts and to map our plans for 2023. So we've heard that training, training, training is uh, an endless need and a priority. And so we, we've fine-tuned some of the training programs that will build on prior programs, also will build on programs that others are conducting uh, in, in the countries that we're working in. And so we'll have, we have a number of training programs scheduled in development for 2023. We also have just established uh, some MOUs between hospitals and international companies to expand access to cancer medicines. I'm also excited to be here because we'll be attending the Adam Coalition meeting this afternoon. So excited to collaborate more with other groups that are bringing uh, different sectors together to expand and scale access to medicines, but Adam also has an interest and a focus on training and capacity building. So we're looking forward to merging and collaborating with UICC on the Adam Coalition and working with other Adam Coalition partners on access training and other areas where there are synergies with our programs. I think just to say that this meeting that is the World Cancer Congress that's coordinated by UICC uh, is really, it's just been a fantastic opportunity to hear the voices of our partners in Africa. I mean, so many people are here from different countries in Africa that are leading national cancer control programs, that are leading oncology hospitals. And it's been a fantastic opportunity to connect with individuals here in Geneva, uh, to also bring partners together across sectors. We've heard from the World Bank, from PEPFAR, uh, I think all of the big international pharmaceutical companies that have uh, focuses on oncology are here and represented and they're very much focused on equity, access, and finding solutions for low and middle income countries. So I love the focus of this meeting. It's really energizing and I, I feel like um, this meeting will really help to drive more collaboration in the space and help to scale initiatives like our African Access Initiative and drive more partnerships with industry and with academics and imp most importantly with African oncology leaders. Mm -hmm.